Welcome to my channel. Today we look at how to solve system of linear equations by use of Kramer's rule. Recall that in the previous videos we looked at how to solve systems of linear equation by Gaussian elimination. We also looked at how to solve by Gauss-Jordan elimination. And then looked at how to solve system of linear equation by use of uh, uh, inverses. So today we use Kramer's rule, and Kramer's rule will be employing use of determinants. So we'll be calculating determinants, and then we use those determinants to calculate the value of x, the value of y, and the value of z. So let's begin with this um, example. And what you notice just before that, what you notice is that for you to solve a system of linear equation by Kramer's rule, the number of equations, number of linear equations must be the same as uh, the number of variables. What I mean is, for instance, in this example that we're doing here, this example has three questions, one, two, three. And you realize that the variables are also three, x, y, and z. So the number of equations and the number of variables must be equal for you to employ Kramer's rule to solve. Now, so the question is use Kramer's rule to solve the system of linear equation. So we want first of all to extract the coefficients. And then after extracting the coefficients <coughs> of these uh, equations, determine the determinants and use those determinants to get the solution. <coughs> now I've written here that thus x will be given by dx over d where dx is just the determinant with respect to x so i'll show you how to get the determinant with respect to x and then d is just the determinant of these coefficients here the coefficients of this this part so the coefficients there are three two negative one we have one four negative 3 and negative 2, 3 and 5. So this determinant is what I'm calling D. This determinant is what I'm calling D. So to find the determinant with respect to x, I'll notice that this column is for the coefficients of x. So this column of the coefficients of x is what I'll substitute with a constant here. These are the constants. The concept, and that's what I've written here. I've said that to solve using Kramer's rule, re replace the variable column of interest with the constant term. So the constant term is here. So the variable of interest is x, and the column for the x was this. So this column <coughs> is the one I replace with the constant, and that means therefore that for me to find the determinant with respect to x, it's this column that I'll have to, to substitute with the constant. The constant is 1, 11, 21. And so that will give me the determinant with respect to x, dx. So if I want the determinant with respect to y, I'll replace this column of y with a constant. And the other column remains. The other columns remain the way they are. So let's look at this example and how it's done. So the question is, use Kramer's rule to solve this. And I've already said that we want to find a dx, then divided by d, then a dy divided by d to give us the value of y, then a dz divided by d shall give us the value of z. Let's write the coefficients. So our d, as we've already stated, our d are the coefficients of this. That's 3, 2, negative 4, 1, 1, 4, negative 3, negative 2, 3, 5. So this is our d. Then in the x, we only replace the column of x. So the column of x we replace with a constant 1, 11, 21. And that's what you see. 
1, 11, 21. The rest remain the same. And then we come to find the determiner with respect to y. That means we'll be replacing the column of y. So I'm using this d. So on this d, I just replace the column of y. So the column of y I replace with this constant 1, 11, 21. So the rest remain. The column with respect to x remain. I replace the column of y. The column of z remains. And then I also want the determinant with respect to z. That means the first two columns remain the way they are. The first two columns remain the way they are. But now this column with respect to z, this column with respect to z is the one I replace with the constant 1, 11, and 21. 1, 11, and 21. And you can see that I put them inside these parallel lines. These parallel lines means determinants. That it determine the determinant of this, determine the determinant of that, determine the determinant of this, and so on. Now, so so far we know how to find determinant of a three by three matrix. Uh, in our previous video, we looked at that. So we'll go straight to determine the. I'll use the simplest method uh, that I showed you in one of my videos. So I want the determinant. D, the determinant D. So you can see this matrix is the one I've written here. This matrix of D is the one I've written here. So these two columns, the first two columns, I have added them here. I've added them here. So this method I've shown you before, I'm just repeating it. So you realize that there's a column, that, you know, there's a diagonal running from there are these three diagonals in blue running from upper left to bottom right. So we multiply along these diagonals and add the results. So you can see I multiply 3 times 4 times 5 to give 60, 2 times negative 3, that is negative 9, no, negative 6 times negative 2, that gives me positive 12. And then this other one, negative 1 times 1 times 3 gives me negative 3. So I've multiplied along these three diagonals and added the results. Then I say minus. This time, multiply along the diagonals in red. The diagonals in red. Running from top right, top right to bottom left. So for instance, 2 times 1 times 5 is 10. So I multiply as I add the results. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9 times 3, that is negative 27. And then this other one, negative 1 times 4 times negative 2 is 8. So I add the results in the first bracket, add the results in the second bracket, and subtract the two results, I get 78. So 78 is our D. The determinant D is 78. So I do the same for dx to find the determinant with respect to the respect to x. So I've done that in the next page here. So what you see here is the matrix of dx. Matrix in dx. I take the two columns and add them here. Multiply along the blue diagonals as I add the results. 1 times 4 times 5 is 20. 2 times negative 3 times 21 is 126, negative 126. And then negative 1 times 11 times 3 is negative 33. I add those results. Then I come to this other diagonal in red and multiply, add the results, and the results are here. When I subtract these two, I get negative 156. And therefore, I had already said that to get x, I'll take dx. Because this is my dx, the determinant of this uh, matrix dx. So that determinant is here. Negative 156. I had said that to get x, I'll take dx divided by d. So dx is negative 156. 
divided by d which is 78 and that gives me negative 20 negative 2 okay let's go back and see what dy was dy was the determinant of this matrix so i want to find the determinant of this matrix so i found it in uh, here i found it here this is our matrix this is the matrix and then take the two first row columns the first two columns add them here and then identify the three diagonals running from top left to bottom right multiply along those diagonals and add the results so three times 11 will be that that three times five will be 165 multiply along this other diagonal to get positive six multiply along this other diagonal to get negative 21 add that result then minus multiply along the diagonals in in red that is five times one times one which is five and this other one will give you negative 189 and this other diagonal will give you positive 22. so when i do this add the first bracket minus the result in the second bracket i get 312. so what is y y is therefore dy over d which is 312 over 78 and that gives me 4. so i do the same for z i do the same to get z i come back there was a dz here this matrix I want to get the determinant, this determinant, dz. So I come here. This is the matrix, dz. Take the first two columns and add them here. And do what you've been doing, multiply along the blue diagonals. And as you add the result, you get 252 minus 44 plus 3. Then multiply along the red diagonals, you get 42 plus 99 minus 8. Now, this first bracket minus the second bracket, the answer is 78. So Z is DZ over D, which is 78 out of 78, that gives us 1. So we now have the value of X, Y, and Z. So what is the solution to the system? We say the solution to the system shall be written in vector form the value of x the value of y and the value of z so this is the solution to that system let's pick one more example let's pick one more example and then we see so that we can master how to use Kramer's rule and the example is here use Kramer's rule to solve the following system the system is a plus 2b plus negative 4c is 2. So you can see the system that it has two equations and the variable, no, it has three equations and the variables are three. <clears throat> so since the number of equations and the number of variables are the same, Kramer's rule can be employed. So we know that to get a we know that to get a we shall check da out of d to get b we shall take db out of d and to get c we shall take bc out of c no out of d <clears throat> so what is interesting here is how to get the a db dc and d so we just repeat the same process that d shall be the determinant of the coefficients that we are seeing here the coefficients here 1 2 negative 4 negative 1 negative 1 3 negative 1 negative 2 5 and that's what you see here that is the determinant that give us d and then to get the determinant with respect to a we shall replace this column of a with the constant column 2 3 5 that's what you see here 2 3 5 and the rest of these columns remain 
the way they are. And then we come to find the determinant with respect to B. So the rest, the column of A remains, the column of C remains, but this column of B, we replace it the constant 2, 3, 5. 2, 3, 5. And then what is DC? The determinant with respect to C. So the column of A remains, the column of B remains, but this column of C is the one that we substitute. We replace with this constant column. And that's what you see here. So we now come straight to determining the determinant. This determinant is D, DA, DB, and the DC. And there are so many ways of doing, uh, calculating the determinants. So since it's a 3 by 3 matrix, let me use the same method that we used in example one. Just a minute, let me erase that. Now, so this was our D. This was our D. Take the first two columns and add them here and multiply along the blue diagonals. I write your result in the first bracket and then multiply in the, in the red. Now, this red, these are diagonals. Model around the, along these red diagonals and write your result in this second bracket. So for instance, this would be two times negative one times five. That will give us negative 10. And then one times three times negative two, that will give us negative six. And negative four times negative one times negative one. That give us negative 4. So when you do this, you find that your D is 1. What about DX? Take the matrix that was given us, the determinant of DX, and that matrix is what I've written here, the one in brackets. The first two columns add them here and multiply along the blue diagonals. For instance, 2 times negative 1 times 5, that is negative 10. 2 times 3, 6 times 5, 30. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12, times negative 2 is positive 24. Write that result in this first bracket, then minus. In the second bracket, write what you get when you multiply along the red diagonals. When you do this, you get 6 as the determinant with respect to A. So what is A? A is dA over D. That is 6 over 1, which gives you 6. Let's proceed to find the determinant with respect to B. That is dB. So the matrix there, the matrix there was this one in bracket. Multiply along the blue diagonals and add, write your result in this first bracket. Multiply along the red diagonals and add, write your result in this other bracket. Now I'm going through very fast in determining the determinants because I had already gone through this in our earlier video. I already showed you how to find the determinant of matrices. So when you do this, you find that DB is 12. So what is B? B is DB out of D, which is 12 out of 1, and that gives you 12. We do the same for to get C, and when you do that, you find that your C is 7. Your C is 7. So you have the value of A, the value of B, and the value of C, and therefore the result, the solution of that system is written in vector form is 6, 12, 7. So uh, 6 is the value of x, no, the value of a, 12 is the value of b, and 7 is the value of c. And that is how we solve the system of linear equation by Kramer's rule. So I'll be loading other videos, that means 
that if you've not subscribed you can subscribe so that when i load a video you can automatically see it thank you